Podiatrist Dr. Helen Banwell has treated just about every type of foot injury you can think of. But in recent years, one common cause of walking accidents has piqued her curiosity. So as part of my work, I was working with children with disability and what we were finding is that they were being prescribed assistant dogs far more often than what they had been in the past. And that's a fabulous thing. But we had noted that some children were presenting with injuries to their face or their body and parents were reporting that they had fallen or tripped while walking their dog. So when we looked at the limited research that had been done in this area, we found a study in America that found that for all of the human and animal interactions that had resulted in somebody being hospitalised, nearly a quarter of the time it was because somebody fell over while walking their dog. So that raised the question for us that if we are going to see a lot more dogs being used as assistant dogs, we really needed to understand what happens to us as we walk our dog on a lead. Using 19 adult walkers and 15 lucky pups, Helen and her colleagues at the University of South Australia measured how we walk alone compared to how we walk with a dog. That measurement was conducted with a PDAR insole system. So this is a wireless system that goes inside your shoes and measures the pressure as you are walking along and that relays back to a computer and we can capture the changes in the pressure sensation going through your feet as you walk. You know, they always say don't work with children or animals, and, uh, but I have to say the animals were incredibly well behaved on this one and it hasn't altered my thought process that I'd much rather work with a dog than a human in most days, I've got to be honest. As Helen had predicted, the study found that our bodies tend to lean back when being pulled along by a dog, but there was one finding that surprised her. What we hadn't thought of was that we move our pressure back or we lean back when we're walking a dog regardless of that dog's behaviour. So what we were specifically looking for was does our gait change when we have a dog that pulls on lead versus a dog that walks alongside us at a standard heel position. It turned out it didn't matter where the dog walked, we instinctively leant back in a brace position in readiness for that dog to potentially pull us further forward. What that means for us is that we've intentionally altered our centre of gravity. And so the consequences are that we are probably more likely to trip because we are not where we would normally be in, per, in sense of pressure and centre of gravity. So this goes a little bit to explaining why people do tend to trip over more when they are walking their dog. So from our perspective, what we need to do is talk to people when we're prescribing dogs and talk to normal dog walkers walking kilometres and kilometres every day about just being conscious of what their posture is doing to try and minimise their risk of falling.